You're listening to a Brooklyn Nets episode of the Jacob Falk Show. He's breaking down the team's latest goings on as only he can. Follow him on Twitter at Real Jacob Falk. Here he is. Jacob Falk. Hello, Nets fans. Welcome to my first Brooklyn Nets show of the 2021-22 season here on the Jacob Volk Show. I am the Jacob Volk, except no imitation. We're three games into the season. It's very early to draw any conclusions. I don't want to scream bloody murder. But there are some issues that I think need to be corrected. The biggest one is you can't expect Kevin Durant and James Harden to do everything by themselves. As great as those guys are. And yeah, Harden's gotten off to a slow start and I'll get into that in a minute. But As great as those guys are, you're not going to win too many games if only two guys score double digits. Seriously, yesterday's game against the Hornets, Durant dropped 38, Harden dropped 15, no one else had 10. Patty Mills came down to earth. Javon Carter couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. Joe Harris only attempted three threes. Blake Griffin didn't play. It was a really bad offensive performance for the Nets. I mean, go back to the Sixers game. How did the Nets win that game? Yes, Durant dropped 29, and he had a triple-double. Yes, James Harden dropped 20. But LaMarcus Aldridge dropped 23 off the bench. Joe Harris had 14 points. And Patty Mills had 11 points. That's the thing. It's a team sport. There are some cases where one guy can step up and lead a team to victory. But it doesn't happen a lot. If the Nets are going to win consistently... They need more offensive production from guys not named Kevin Durant and James Harden. Now, as for Harden, he has not played well through these first three games. He's only put up 18.3 points per game. He's shooting just 38.8% from the field, 39.1% from beyond the arc. James Harden needs to be better than that. It's just that simple. I love Harden. I'm not saying the Nets should get rid of him. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying he needs to be better. I mean, when he was with the Rockets, I never saw him miss a step back three. When he was isolated on a defender, one-on-one, it's a step back three, nothing but net. Sometimes he'd get a free throw out of it, sometimes three, but if a foul wasn't called, I never saw him miss a step back three. He's missed a lot of those with the Nets. That's his biggest weapon. He really needs to rediscover that. Okay, if I'm the Nets, every day in practice, I'm working with James Harden on that. His passing doesn't need work. His rebounding doesn't need work. He's great at that. The step back three, he needs to fix. 
He's upset that he's not getting as many fouls called against him as he used to get. Yeah. That's an issue. I agree with Harden in a sense that the referees don't want to reward him. I mean, Harden's the poster child of shooting a three, kicking his leg out, and then the defender gets called for a foul for that because he didn't give the shooter a landing spot. Meanwhile, Harden kicked his leg out so he wouldn't have a landing spot. I mean, no one does that better than Harden. And the NBA changed the rule. They want referees to be more cognizant of that. Referees aren't stupid. They know why rules are changed. They read the last two-minute reports. So, yeah, they're not going to give Harden a lot of opportunities to shoot free throws because the rules have been changed. Because they've been told to de-emphasize that element of players' games. You want to tell me that's unfair? Eh. It's a rule that doesn't only affect Harden. It affects everyone in the NBA. It just affects some players more. Harden's one of those guys who it affects more. He's very good at drawing fouls. The thing is, though, that's not the only way that he can contribute offensively. Yes, he's a good rebounder. Yes, he's a good passer. But you've got to hit those step-back threes. Harden really isn't doing that with the Nets. That's why his field goal percentage is so low. That's why his points per game are under 20. If he's not going to get the calls on drives to the basket, I'm not saying that's right. If it's a foul, it should be called. I don't care who the ball handler is. I don't care who the defender is. A foul's a foul. But if the referees are going to swallow the whistle a little bit more with Harden, I'm fine with step back freeze. I'm fine with catch and shoot threes. You're a great shooter. I want you to shoot more. You just got to hit those step backs. It was lethal when you were with Houston. In Brooklyn, it hasn't been. And I don't know why. It's something that needs to be worked on. Yes, the fouls are infuriating. I get that. You have a right to be upset about that. If a foul's a foul, it should be called. Yes, no question. But the bigger issue here is the lack of step-back threes. That needs to change before anything else. I really haven't been that impressed with the Nets' defense. If the Nets' offense is going to lack the scoring prowess of Kyrie Irving, they've got to compensate on the defensive end. Irving's absence is resulting in Javon Carter playing over 22 minutes a game. All due respect to Javon Carter, there's a role for him in the NBA, but he can't play over 22 minutes per game for a team with title aspirations. If all you bring to the party is good perimeter defense, that's great, fantastic, but it's very easy to guard against that. I'll leave you alone and I'll focus on Durant or Harden or Harris. Someone like that. I mean, Javon Carter only has two points per game. In over 22 minutes per game. That is pathetic. If the Nets aren't going to be an offensive juggernaut, then they need to step up on defense. And they really haven't done that. They haven't been awful defensively, but they haven't been great. I mean, yesterday's game against the Hornets was the first game that I could point to and say Kyrie would have made a difference. Because Javon Carter only had three points. 
The Nets lost by 16. Kyrie Irving's good for 20, 25 points. The Nets win that game if Kyrie plays. Maybe the defense takes a little bit of a step back. But Bruce Brown got a lot of playing time. You can give Javon Carter minutes. Just don't give him over 22. You want to give James Johnson some more minutes? I'm okay with that. You've got to find that balance between offense and defense. With the big three in place, you could go offense, offense, offense. Now, you need the defense to step up. And it really hasn't done that. It hasn't been awful, but it hasn't been great. But now, on to Kyrie. The biggest story that the Nets have, and he'll continue to be the biggest story until something changes. The latest update is there were protests outside the Barclays Center yesterday and they were chanting to let Kyrie play. In a weird way, it was kind of beautiful. You had people in MAGA hats in lockstep with people who are outwardly Black Lives Matter. It was kind of nice to see those two factions come together on something. Now, I didn't agree with everything they did, okay? Some of them blew past the barricade. Some of them tried to get into the Barclays Center and almost succeeded. Great job by Barclays Center Security. Great job by the NYPD. If only the Capitol Police had been that good on January 6th. I understand less people... These protesters were less violent, but still, the Capitol protesters got in. The Barclays Center protesters didn't. That's a good job by the NYPD and Barclays Center security. Bad job by the Capitol Police, okay? It's just that simple. I don't think anyone has a problem with the protesters protesting. If you do it where you're supposed to and you're not harassing paying customers, people who bought a ticket or security or police, okay, that's perfectly fine. But when you jump the barricade, when you try to get into the Barclays Center, I have an issue with that. I mean, what was your goal? If you got into the Barclays Center, what was your goal? What were you going to do? Run onto the court? Not leave until Kyrie was cleared to play? There's no way that would work. Stupid. Just stupid to try to enter the Barclays Center. Now, someone brought up a very good point to me about Kyrie. He really doesn't like that Kyrie is being punished because he just so happens to play for a New York team. If he played for the Celtics, the Cavaliers, the Mavericks, the Rockets, the Heat, the Magic, etc., etc., there'd be no issue with him being unvaccinated. He could play. Maybe he'd have to jump through more hoops, no pun intended, but he could play. That's the most important thing. I think everyone would sign up for Kyrie Irving is allowed to play. He just has to do X, Y, and Z. He can remain unvaccinated. He just has to do X, Y, and Z. I think everyone would sign up for that. 
And yeah, the reality is, it is unfair that Kyrie is being punished for playing for a New York team. Like, I never thought of it that way until my buddy brought it up. It was my buddy Nick, not Nick Ornberger, another Nick. You know, here's a guy who grew up rooting for the Nets. The first chance he got, he signed with the Nets. He was really happy to play with them. And Kevin Durant is there, and James Harden, and Joe Harris, and Blake Griffin, and LaMarcus Aldridge, and all these guys. Yeah, last year it didn't end the way that anyone wanted it to, but... To paraphrase Gone with the Wind, next season is another year. Instead, he finds out that he has to get vaccinated if he wants to play. It's stupid that he doesn't want to get vaccinated. Okay? But it is a little unfair that because he plays for a New York team... He's not eligible to play. I don't know if he'd be eligible to play if he was a Warrior or a Clipper or a Laker. I just know that for the Knicks and the Nets, he can't play home games. Away games he could play, but the Nets don't want to do that. I don't blame him. You know, here's the thing. Those protesters are getting upset at the wrong entity. Why are you getting upset at the Barclays Center? Why are you getting upset at the NBA? It's a New York City issue. If you want to protest, go to Federal Hall, go to Gracie Mansion, go to City Hall. Don't go to the Barclays Center. Makes no sense. Again, the protesters there are just stupid. I'm not saying that their point of view is stupid. I'm just saying the way that they went about expressing their point of view was stupid. I mean, it's very possible that this thing with Kyrie is providing a distraction that's going to be really tough to overcome. And that's part of the reason why the Nets are struggling. And it's a distraction that shouldn't be there. Like, Kyrie should just get the vaccine. There's no good reason not to. Unless you have a medical or religious exemption, just get it. If you can't get it because you're going to get really sick from it, or it's really against your religion, fine. I'm okay with you not getting it. I'm totally understanding of that. But the reasons that people have proposed for why Kyrie doesn't want the vaccine is just stupid. It's going to connect you directly with Satan. Do I need to tell you how dumb that is? He wants to be a voice for the voiceless. There's no reason that you can't be a voice for the voiceless while getting vaccinated and playing for the Nets. In fact, your message will be amplified. You can think it's unfair that people need to be vaccinated to do X, Y, and Z. That's perfectly fine. I'm not saying I agree with you. I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm just saying you have a right to your opinion. But the better way to spread that message is by playing, by using the grand platform that you have to send that message. Not by not playing. No one's paying attention to you now. You know when we paid attention to you? When you played basketball. I mean, if you want to leave the NBA and focus on social causes that are near and dear to your heart, that's fine. I respect that. 
I actually have a lot of respect for that. You're throwing away millions of dollars to pursue something that's of great importance to you personally? That would actually be really, really impressive. But until you do that, I can think that you're wrong for not getting the vaccine. Next week, you're going to get a New York Islanders show. That's going to come at night. You're going to get a Brooklyn Nets show two weeks from tonight. Regular episodes of the Jacob Volk show come your way every weekday afternoon. Also, let me say this. The New York Jets instant recaps that I do for the game against the Bengals, I am going. Couldn't get out of it. It'll be nice to see friends that I never see. But given the fact that Mike White is starting a quarterback, it's going to be tough to get excited about it. I'll have fun seeing Joe Burrow. That I'll like. Never seen him in person. That'll be fun. The recap for that game will come a week from today in the morning. So a week from today, New York Jets recap in the morning. Regular episode of the Jacob Volk show in the afternoon and a New York Islanders show in the evening. A week after that, regular episode of the Jacob Volk show in the afternoon and another Brooklyn Nets show at night. Until next time, I'm Jacob Volk and always remember, if you disagree with me, You're wrong.